Uh oh. How did all that get down there? Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. We are working on the dining room table today. And last video we went through and did a uh, preliminary flattening on these. I wanted to get them down to close to their, new, their final thickness. Um, I'm gonna end up cleaning, up the, cleaning them up and flattening them a little bit more once they're joined. Uh, but now it is time to actually start doing the epoxy fill. Now I have several different types of epoxy fills I'm going to be using on this. Um, number one, I'm gonna be using the West System Epoxy. Uh, it is a, uh, a faster, hard, it's a very simple epoxy. It costs a bit more, but it is a very reliable epoxy. I'm gonna be using uh, the Eco Epoxy. Um, this is the, the liquid plastic. Now, normally when you mix this one-to-one, uh, -one, it tends to be a little rubbery and soft, uh, but if you mix it uh, one part hardener to two parts resin, um, then it actually becomes harder. I know, adding less hardener makes it harder. Mind blown. Um, <laughs> but then I'll also be using a UV epoxy uh, from Eco Epoxy, and then I'll be using a five minute epoxy, um, as well as taping things off and different epoxies for different purposes. So in this video, I wanna go through, number one, prepping all the surfaces for the epoxy, um, taping them off, getting them ready, and then I'm gonna take you through all the different stages of the actual epoxy. Now this may end up being uh, a couple videos in length because there's a lot of information I wanna get in here, and I've had a lot of people asking different questions about what do I use here, how do I use that, and I really wanna answer all those questions of, I have some voids here that I'm just gonna pour in, I have cracks I need to fill in, I have bug holes I wanna fill in, um, I have to actually make a fake um, edge on some pieces because there's no bottom here. Um, how do you actually go about uh, taping that off and doing it? So let's dive in. The first thing we need to do is uh, start cleaning up all of the inclusions on the inside. So let's take a look at that. Now, the first thing I wanna do is start removing all of this loose debris. Um, and some of this is just the, the punky wood that is bad and a wire brush really does a good job of that. I wanna keep this grainy look. So I'm gonna be running with the grain. If I wanna remove a lot of material, I'll go across the grain. You can see how that kind of marches through this really weak stuff. But then once I get down to a certain depth, I'll do that. Um, and I want this grainy look because I'm going to be filling this whole thing with epoxy. I'm going to have an edge of epoxy here so you can actually look down and see all this structure in there. So I want to get that to a shape that I like. And remember, this is your world. You can make it anything you want. So if you like the shape or if you want to see it, if you don't want to see it, great. You see how that comes out. Now the next thing is the bark. Some people really don't like the bark in there. In this case, I think I really like this bark. In some places I'm gonna take off the bark, in some places I'm gonna leave it. Um, in this type of piece, I really like that in there. I like that intrigue. And especially once I fill this with epoxy, you'll be able to look in and see all that. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. For inside the void, I do wanna keep this darker color. Um, I don't want to bring it out to the, uh, the red oak look. So I'm just gonna be scrubbing off the debris, the dirt, the junk. I'll probably come in here with uh, an air hose and a vacuum in a minute and really work into this. I just wanna kinda of get reached back in there because all this dirt, um, if it comes loose with the epoxy, then just floats in the epoxy and we don't want that. So I wanna get rid of as much as I can. So I'm just coming in here with a toothbrush um, and a dental pick and kind of cleaning out things. If there's any particular chunk I want to clean out, then I'll come in with a chisel and pop it out. Uh, but most of this is coming fairly well. So I'm, most of the work is going to be done with wire brush, a toothbrush, and a chisel. And I'm just going to go around and hit some of these fun spots. And then after doing one side, I'm going to flip these over and do it again on the other side. Whoo, don't let it fall over. <laughs> now I'm going to do it on the back particularly because this is where I'm going to be putting all of the masking so that the epoxy doesn't come through. Uh, and so I want this surface to be nice and clean, but it also gives me a more chance to look at some of the, the spots that I couldn't hit earlier and make sure that everything is clean, all of the dirt is taken out of them, and they are all ready for actually putting epoxy in. Uh, because once I clean off this side, next thing I do is start masking it off. So let's clean this and I'll show you what I do for masking. So now for actually taping this off, a lot of people um, say you should use Tyvek tape. Works great, I, I like that stuff. It's just not quite as flexible as I'd like. What I like to use is this stuff. It's actually matte tape, uh, wrestling matte tape. And it is extremely flexible. It has a good bit more adhesive on the bottom. And you can kind of stretch this and shape it to whatever you want. And it just holds phenomenally well. And so what I can do is I can pick these spots 
put a slop over it, cut them out, and tape it down. And this is this is a tape that I trust to hold out the epoxy. And as I work it into the grain, the adhesive itself just kind of wiggles down into it. And this will provide a perfect seal so when I pour epoxy through and it comes out into this knot, it's not going to pour out and it's not going to go around the seams and whatnot. And even if there's a really porous surface like on this red oak, um, it's going to stay inside. So I really like um, matte tape. I'll leave a link to it down below. It's not terribly cheap. Um, it's a little cheaper than Tyvek tape, um, but I really like it. It's, it's stuff that I trust. Now, when it comes to these large voids, I could run a whole series of wraps of tape across it, uh, but I don't trust that. And number two, that leaves the adhesive side of the tape um, down, which when I flip this over to actually pour the epoxy in, the adhesive side of the tape will be up. It's not a problem with the epoxy, uh, but if between now and then any dust settles onto that adhesive side, um, I can't just vacuum it off. It's now at the bottom of the epoxy. Um, so I like to actually, in this big open area where I'm going to be able to, to see through, to put down a sheet of plastic and then tape this plastic into place and make sure that that is nice and sealed. Um, also, this allows it to cover a larger area, whereas this void may leak into this knot, which then has a connection into this bug hole, and this bug hole comes way over here. And when you're working with really thin epoxies, that might mean that this entire area will drain out of that one little bug hole. Um, having a larger sheet um, will protect that. Now, if you really, really wanted to, you could put an entire sheet over the whole thing, flip it upside down, have a flat surface to maintain it. Um, but then you're going to have a little bit of spill out, you'll have epoxy around the whole thing. You're probably going to end up using a lot more epoxy, so that's why I like doing it this way. So I'm going to cut it kind of in a rough shape, and then I'm going to tape down the outside all the way around this. And this plastic that I'm using is a thicker 6 mil plastic, uh, so it's a little bit more durable, a little bit more functional, and I'm going to trust it a bit more for that. So I'm going to work this tape all the way around it. Now in this particular pour, I have some interesting things. Like on this base, this doesn't connect all the way around, so I'm going to have to seal this off, but it's a rough surface, and that's going to be an interesting one to figure out. So um, yeah, let's take a look at that. I'll start by cutting the plastic to the outside edge that I want to create. Um, as there is no outside edge, I can decide whatever I want it to be. And then I wrap a piece of tape around the edge, kind of creating what the edge will be. And then after that is in place, then I'll wrap a piece from the underside of the table, which is now on top, around the board to the top side of the table, which is now on the bottom. And this then creates a, a clean barrier all the way around. Because it's such an organic shape and weird um, edges that I have to work everything into, I actually then go through and do a whole other layer on it, um, putting a piece along the edge and then wrapping another t piece of tape from the bottom of the table around to the top of the table. Uh, and that seals it in really nicely and creates this uh, beautiful little edge that will uh, fill up with epoxy and give me a nice clean edge that I can buff out in the future. Now where I get these termination points where the tape is here, um, epoxy might want to seep out between this because it really isn't a good connection between the tape and the wood. So what I do there is because I haven't cleaned this off yet, I'm going to put a, a bit of five minute epoxy on this surface and that will basically bind the tape to the wood. And I'm going right across the end of the seam and then I'll put one more piece of tape over top of this epoxy so that it holds in place. Like that then with the epoxy on that seam, I think you can come in with the tape and seal it off. That way I know I have a really good bond and no epoxy is going to want to come out of there once this is up and glued. When taping off these large voids in this, it's wise to start at the middle and work your way out. So start with the, the biggest area that needs the most coverage and then work out from there. Make sure you wrap all the way around the table. You want it sticking to the underside. Have a good fit. And then work down all of the seams. Make sure that there's no point for epoxy to come out. I'll then repeat that over and over again, um, leaving about an inch of overlap between each piece. And sometimes with these large voids, I'll actually come back through and do a second layer of tape. Um, the bigger the void is, the more pressure there is behind it, so you want to uh, cover it better. Um, if I'm just doing pinholes, one sheet with a one inch overlap or quarter inch overlap is perfectly fine, but for big pieces like this, I want a lot more. 
Then wrap the corner nicely so that it is sealed and holds out everything there. Then usually if I have any buggy hole, bug holes, I'll come in with some 5 minute epoxy and fill the back of them. Uh, but this board has so many bug holes, that would have taken just about forever. Um, I just decided to go and coat the entire thing in tape and then give it about a quarter inch of overlap on each line of tape uh, so that glue doesn't have a chance of coming up. And then I'm going to just come through and work down all of the tape seams, make sure that everything is the way it needs to be, and we're ready to start pouring. At this point, I get excited because we can start adding things to it. This uh, first coat of epoxy, I'm going to be adding dyes. I want it to be opaque so you can't see through it. I'm using this ecosystem uh, metallic blue that puts in there and then a little bit of the eco uh, epoxy um, dye, to, a little bit of green to make it a little more tealish rather than just straight blue. And then mix it up. And I can use the power mixer on this because the bubbles come out of it a good bit faster. Whip it all up and you can see that really cool metallic surface. This will be the epoxy that goes on the bottom. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how this comes out. Once it has been fully mixed up, I can uh, let it all drip off of the power mixer. And then I'll put it in a separate side tray to let it um, completely come off. If I uh, let it sit for a while, that will almost all come off the plastic. Mm -hmm. Then we can take it over and pour it in. And I just want this to be about a quarter inch thick. Um, I'm doing two different colors in here. The first one was just straight blue, and this one has a little bit more of that teal color in it. And that will give a slightly different definition between the two because it gives it a little more of like a, a deep water and a light water look. Um, whether or not I want that, I, I like just the, the swirling of the, the two slightly different colors. Pouring it in, making sure I get into all the voids and cracks so there's a solid quarter inch of this on the, uh, the bottom of all of the voids that you can see. It'll come with a stick and add a little bit of swirl into it. This will even out over time as it works back into cracks, but that will just give it a little bit more uh, happiness to the shape and body of it. After that, propane torch to pop the bubbles. Um, this uh, bottom layer of epoxy is the West System because uh, it's only a quarter inch thick. That's not a problem, and it'll set up overnight. Uh, but the West System, you do have to be careful of getting rid of all of the bubbles. They don't float out quite as well as the Eco Epoxy. So have a little bit of fun with the... Okay, so last night we poured the, uh, the, the bottom coat, and so there's only about a quarter inch of this metallic blue in there. Before going on to the next one, I actually want to come through and I'm going to wipe this all down. So I'm going to come into the rag, wipe off the surface, I'm going to go back through again and clean up and vacuum out, and I want this all to be pristine and clean, so when I pour in the clear, there's absolutely nothing on this, and it's ready for that. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Now for the main portion of the pour, uh, that's about an inch, about an inch and a half, uh, some, uh, maybe about an inch and three quarters thick, I'm going to be using Ecopoxy, um, particularly liquid plastic. And the tests I've done with this, this stuff is absolutely perfectly clear, so I'll be able to see that metallic blue underneath really nicely. Uh, the other nice thing about this is you can pour it really nice and thick, and it's not going to heat up and cause problems like you're going to get with West System, which would overheat that thick. You can pour it up to two inches thick and still not have any problem. Um, and so this is perfect for it. The downside to it is if you pour it, mix it one-to-one -one, um, liquid uh, hardener and resin, it's going to remain a bit rubbery and flexible and bendable. But the interesting thing is that if you add two parts resin, to one part hardener, it will become rock hard. And I know it's kind of counterintuitive that more or that less hardener makes it harder, but the less hardener you put in, the harder it is. Now the problem with less hardener is that it's going to take longer to set. It's going to take about 72 hours for this to set up and become hard. Um, and then a little bit more longer before it is workable. So I want to get this in so that I have a while to wait on it. Um, after this, I'm going to do a small thin coat on top of the UV epoxy. This will be really rock hard, uh, plus it provides a bit of UV uh, protection on top. Uh, but for the majority of the pour, it's going to be this stuff. And that's why I have three gallons worth of um, this. The other nice thing about this, because it has such a long set and it's so thin, I mean, it's almost watery. You can hear it sloshing around inside there. Um, you can mix it with a power mixer and the bubbles will float out of it. Um, and because it takes so long to set, all those bubbles have lots of time to work out. So if you do have bubbles sticking down the bottom, you can stick a stick down there and rub them out and they'll float out to the top. And because it's so watery, it works into every pore and you get a really nice, clean, clear surface. So for this type of work, this is really the best epoxy I can find for it. And uh, one of the reasons why I'm using it. One liter. 
or that was a half liter, excuse me. So then this will take up to a liter and a half. And then even with the power mixer, I'm going to want to mix this for three minutes. Really good, clean, clear mixing. Now if I look down there and I can see it's full of bubbles, but the bubbles are all rising. So if I let this sit for about 20 minutes or so, all those bubbles will work out. Or I can go ahead and put it into the form and just let them work out that way. So this is the fun part. And oh, I love that. I can see the blue underneath. I'm just going to let this dump in and run through all the gaps. Go back and make another batch, come back and do this. Should probably get a bigger bucket so I can dump it all at once. But because of how long a set time this has, it really doesn't matter. I can just make up a couple buckets and go. A couple other nice things about Ecopoxy is, number one, it is an Ecopoxy, um, which means it's, <laughs> it's really safe stuff. So there's no VOCs, there's no problem with doing it in my basement. Whereas with a lot of other epoxies, uh, there would be a lot of other problems I'd be worried about, um, especially with doing it in my basement. Um, about that stuff that I don't want to breathe, don't want in my lungs. And it makes this really easy. One of the other reasons why I like to do it in small batches is that I have a better control about how much I'm using. If I do it in one big batch, um, I may make too much. And I don't want to do that. So now we can pour it in all the other spots too. And I'm leaving about a little over a quarter inch that I can then fill up with the other. Uh, now the Ecopoxy does not um, contract uh, like other epoxies, but what it will do is it will eventually, because it's so watery, it'll seep into the wood and it takes so long that it'll actually seep farther into the wood than most others. So the level will go down. Um, so I want to keep that in mind. It'll probably go down about an eighth of an inch with how wild this is. Um, and because I really had no idea how much I'm actually going to be using, I really can't measure this out and say I'm going to need this much, uh, it becomes a little more difficult to actually figure out um, how much I'm going to need and so therefore I've kind of kind of play it by ear. Is it enough? I don't know. And there are a few bubbles down on the bottom so I can use this stick to just pop them up. They're just like sticking to things. And I don't have to worry about it too much. They just come right up. Once they've disconnected from the bottom, they float to the top pretty quickly. One thing that you can do that you don't have to do is pop the bubbles on the surface. And you can do that with a torch. You don't have to, but let me tell you, it's fun. And the surface just looks so amazing when all the bubbles suddenly disappear. It's just per pure glass. There, all the bubbles are gone. That's just, it's clear, absolutely crystal clear. And then we let it sit, walk away, leave it alone. If you're really worried about dust, you can cover it, but uh, I'm just gonna leave it. Three days, let it sit. Okay, I'm really happy with how this slab came out. A little bit more absorbed into the wood than I expected, and the level went down a little bit. I'm down about uh, uh, just a hair over a quarter inch down. So that's okay. I like that. I can work with that. Everything was good on this last night. I poured it at 6 o'clock. Very happy. I kept an eye on it until about 11. Everything looked good. The pour was going exactly how I expected uh, until I woke up this morning, and then I came downstairs and I looked at the other slab. And unfortunately, because this um, is so liquid, it's almost like water, it found a small pore, I'm guessing because that had that strip of plastic coming all the way out to here. I didn't have as much of a good uh, tape connection here on the plastic, and it found a small hole that I missed. Ah! And you can see how almost all of the epoxy in here poured out onto the floor there, onto the floor here. Thankfully, uh, it takes a couple days, so I was able to lift the board up and put plastic underneath so I don't glue this down to the floor. Um, but I had one leak in here. Uh, jaw, drives me absolutely crazy. Uh, so the other board went fantastic. This one, not so good. And uh, now I've got to work with this slab and uh, try and work around that. But at least now this will have filled that hole and solidified it. So the next pour, it should be nice and solid and ready to go. I, I hope.
Oops. So I was hoping to wrap up this video today, um, pouring on the UV epoxy on top, and then doing some of the other detail things and uh, getting these ready for joinery. But unfortunately, due to the leaking, I've got to go order more eco epoxy. Ah, oh well, um, it's coming along. Um, and uh, you know, out of all the epoxies I've used before, eco epoxy is one of the most um, liquid, which makes it a little more difficult for stopping those um, leaks but the crystal clear quality of it is well worth the problem of <laughs> dumping out uh, three quarters of a gallon on your floor. Hey, at least I now have a, an epoxy covered floor, so we gotta be happy about that. <laughs> but uh, that being said, um, I'm gonna have to split this up into two videos, so um, next time we will have the video of finishing this pour and putting on the UV and doing a few other things. And then I'm also gonna be doing a video that is more focused on the detail of how do you actually work with epoxy and filling large vo voids uh, and trying not to have leaks on, like the one I had. Um, I'll probably be including a few lessons learned in that as well. But uh, for now, uh, that will about do it. So I hope you have been enjoying this. Uh, if you have any questions or ideas, let me know in the comments below what would you have done differently or what would you like to see me do differently next time. So, uh, yep, that's about it. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why I can keep putting out videos like this. If you'd like to help out with Patreon or uh, become a part of it in any way, there's a link for it right down there. Also, you can subscribe to the channel, share, and like. Those really help me out a lot. And uh, that's about it. Until next time, have a wonderful day.